Go ahead. Hello, Mary. How are you doing? Hi. I'm great. Thank you. Great. Thanks for agreeing to be with us today for this uncontest follow-up, a bit of a re uh, interview with you about your recent retirement. And also welcome to our Facebook viewers who are with us today. My name is Leslie Mackay, and I am the Regional Team Coordinator. It's my pleasure to be interviewing Mary Hager today. Mary is the recently retired Frontline Director of Rhythm of the Rockies Chorus from Calgary, Alberta. So welcome, Mary. Thank you. I'd like to start by asking you when you first joined Sweet Adelines, and can you please touch on the different choruses you've belonged to over the years? Okay, well, uh, my husband and I moved from Northern Ontario to Edmonton in February of 1985. And I'd, I'd heard about Sweet Adelines before then, but I'd only lived in a little town, so I had never joined. But by September, I was at my first Sweet Adeline um, practice, rehearsal, uh, with Gateway Chorus. So I, start, I, I joined in 85. Um, stayed with uh, Gateway Chorus for eight years, and then my husband's work brought him to Calgary, so I, we moved down to Calgary in 93, and I joined Chinook Wins Chorus, and I was with them for eight years. Uh, the last two years, uh, 2000 and 2001, I was the frontline director for Chinook Wins Chorus, and then uh, uh, I left Chinook Wins in June of 2001, and we started having basement rehearsals <laughs> uh, with Rhythm of the Rockies that summer. And we got our charter by April 15th of 2002. So it was a pretty quick trip. Wow, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and how long did you direct Rhythm of the Rockies then? How many years is that? Well, uh, we 17, 17 and a half years. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. All right, great. Well, when I joined Sweet Adelines, I joined Gateway as well, as you well know, and I remember you singing on the road behind me at, in tenor. I remember that, and I had a difficult time maintaining my baritone. I <laughs> remember that very, very well. Um, can you tell us how long you were with Gateway and who inspired you when you were there? Well, the very first rehearsal, uh, the, uh, the first person who was in front of the chorus was Cheryl Brooke. She was doing the vocal uh, warm up for the chorus. And uh, that hooked me even before I heard my first chord because she, she did such an excellent job of, of getting my voice to do what I wanted it to do. That was great. Uh, and then the director of the chorus, Marlene Epi, was, was a, great, a great first director to have. She was a, a great teacher. And so you got all the fundamentals and you learned, you learned a lot with her as a director. And strangely, the, the other person that really affected the, me the most in the chorus was um, uh, Judy McDonald. She was, uh, came in the same year as me. We, we came in in the same group. It was, I think it was one of their big like um, singing promotional things that brought a whole lot of people through the door. And uh, she became, uh, she and I quartetted together. She became the, uh, membership coordinator. She was just a really big personality. And, and uh, she one day she said, she said to me, you like to sing harmony? I said, yes. And she said, well, I want, I want to go to this arrangers thing with Joey Mitchell and I think you should come with me. And so that was, that was okay, here I go. You know, so she was, she was a big influence as well. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. So you started singing on the risers. When did you first realize you wanted to direct your own chorus? Um, well, uh, Gateway kept me pretty busy for about the first five or six years, but I did. I by then I had become like a choreographer, and and they they called it the show producer and and those sorts of things. But uh, I did end up becoming assistant director and. At that point in time, I thought it would be fun to just be out there waving your hands. I hadn't a clue what a director actually did. Uh, so, but I got to do performances and things like that. But it sort of, you know, got the ball rolling and, and I started thinking seriously about it uh, by, the, by the, la and the last year or so that I was with Gateway. And then when I moved to Calgary, I knew I had to step back 
because they didn't know me <laughs> and I couldn't come in and say, well, I'm going to be, you know, <laughs> uh, but the bug, the bug had bit. And so I ended up being the director of that course. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Can you talk a little bit about the challenges of starting your own Sweet Adeline chorus? Uh, everything, you know, like, like, where do you, where do you rehearse? Uh, how do you get people to take you seriously when there's, you know, seven of you in somebody's basement, you know? <laughs> um, but we, we, uh, I had a great team, Joanne and uh, Joanne Killips and Cheryl Yamada were sort of spearheading the whole charter process. And so I didn't have to worry about that side of it. Um, music was a little hard to come by because we had no money. <laughs> Uh, Sweet Adelines gives you a couple of free pieces of music, but they were not really inspiring. Um, uh, so we started a, an adopt a song program where people would donate in that, you know, money to, for us to buy, you know, 30 copies of, of different pieces of music. So th that was that was the first challenge, and that's how we got past it. How do we get? music because if you're not learning new music it's really hard to keep people interested in being there um we we did basement rehearsals for the whole summer and in just slightly into the fall and we lucked into mcdougall united actually before they did their renovations we we used that as a rehearsal space for a while we didn't have any risers so we just stood on the stairs that went up to the choir loft and uh so we were there for a while um but it seemed like everything, like you run into all these issues, money being the biggest, but um, how, do you, how, do you get, how do you get risers? And we ended up really in a great place. We had somebody donated the money for our risers, um, but to get a tax deduction, he actually donated it to a Rotary Club, which donated it to us. It was, it, but, it was all through people who knew us and who knew the chorus and and it, it was wonderful it, it almost felt felt like um if we ran into a challenge there was a little angel on our shoulder who just sort of made it happen you know um so yes there were challenges but they were not as hard to get past as we thought they were going to be awesome well it sounds like the chorus was meant to be mm -hmm. I'm yeah. So a second part to this um, question, when did you first get interested in arranging and what's um, your favorite personal arrangement that you took on stage with your chorus? Um, well, like I, I said earlier, Judy McDonald dragged me into one class with Joey Mitchell. <clears throat> and I've, I, I have always been a harmony singer. And I also have a background in mathematics and arranging is very mathematical um, to begin with. Like uh, music is a mathematical thing. Um, so it, became, it was a bit of a challenge. I, I joined IMAP and uh, was, was um, a member of IMAP for quite a few years until they said to me, uh, they finally got, I got to the stage where they said, you know all the rules and you know how to use them all. Now you have to learn how to break them. And my, my mathematical brain went, you know, I, and I realized that I would never be a creative arranger uh, that I, but I, but I could fix things. I could, you know, if I didn't like it, uh, an intro or a tag or if chords needed to be revoiced and all that. So, so actually fairly early on in the life of, uh, of um, Rhythm of the Rockies, I had stopped being an actual, you know, arranging songs. But the one that we did with, with Rhythm that I really enjoyed doing, we did at our charter, at the regional, you know, uh, first night, they let a newly chartered chorus get up and do a little package. And uh, one of the songs in the package was my arrangement. It's, it's called Big Hair Gives You Confidence. <laughs> and figured it suited the organization and it suited the chorus, so it was fun. Oh, great, that's awesome. So what's the proudest moment you had on stage with your chorus? 
Well, I'd have to say that was Hawaii um, when we were in the uh, Harmony Classic and we won the double A division of the Harmony Classic. That was wow. That was quite a quite an exciting thing to do. I can imagine. Who are some of the coaches you've worked with? Um, can you give us a couple of your favorites and tell us why you admired them? Okay. Well, I we've had uh, from the beginning we had. Um, just about every regional coach come at one time or another to coach us. Um, Karina Garrett came on a you know um, a relatively regular basis. We've had uh, uh, Marcia Pinvidic came to one of our retreats. That was really fun. Uh, our through our charter, uh, we had uh, Chris Evans from uh, Regina came to be our our coach through that process, um, and we've had Joy Mitchell. I, I really love Joey. She's such a great coach. And uh, but when it comes to people that we had on a more regular basis, Carrie Metzger, I know that she's not Carrie Metzger anymore, but she she was um, a pretty perennial coach, sort of a mentor coach for us when we were pretty new. And she was the first person who who saw potential in the course and and actually said if you work hard, you could become an A-level course. And, and all, all of us are going, but we're not even a B-plus level course now. How could you see that? But it, we, and we, we have tipped into the A uh, category periodically. So she was, uh, she was a seer. Uh, and then um, after one contest, Sandy Marin came up to me and she said, you guys uh, need to have an international coach because you're ready for that right now and it will tip you like we were just touching into the b plus category she said it will just tip you right in into that category and you can keep going so she actually was our mentor coach going through uh several of our trips to international uh she would come for our retreat and then for come for two two or so other coachings afterwards she's the one who took us through to uh to 2013 when we were at How Many Classic. Um, and she was, she gave us a great coaching at you know the, the contest. And the best part of it was about an hour and a half into a two hour coaching session, she said, you guys are ready. And she just let it let us go home. And I think that, that was that was a big confidence booster and all of those sorts of things. So it, it helped us put our best um, show on that stage. So that was really good. Awesome. So let's switch gears a little bit. How many years did you serve on the Region 26 Regional Education Faculty? And can you share a couple of times you remember from that time? Um, well, uh, I can't give you the exact date. I know I was in Calgary because Susan McLean uh, encouraged me to get onto the, the regional education faculty and she was the director of Chief Prince at the time. And she was also the DMA, I guess it was still DMA back then. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, so so I got I got on and started coaching right away. Right now there's a process to get onto the regional education faculty. You have to go and, and observe other people coaching and all those sorts of things. And, and when I came in, they just sort of threw you out into the wilderness and you know hope that you wouldn't die <laughs> before you got home you know um i i've done mostly uh small course coachings but i've also done some uh, some teaching at the like um uh, i did uh gosh like the the fall regional sort of places i've done teaching there and one year when that when the uh res was in uh Regina, I uh, took some classes because that that year Mofield was a faculty and she got ill. So we sort of all had to jump in and, and do that kind of thing. So I think I, I enjoyed the class part of it a lot, uh, even though I, the coaching for me is is absolutely fascinating and, and really fun to see the energy and, and uh, the committed, you know, how committed people are to becoming better and those sorts of things. So I guess I, I like them both. Both. <laughs> yeah. 
So you started when you were with Chinook? That's when you... When I was with Chinook. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere around um, 94, 95, okay. I believe. Yeah. So a little birdie told me about a time when the police showed up at your hotel room, and I don't know what contest it was, but can you tell us a story around that? Okay. Well, <laughs> well it was in Vancouver, well, Surrey. Um, I can't tell you exactly which year it was, but it was not that long ago. <clears throat> and and uh, some of the girls were in room 911. <laughs> and I just wanted to call the girls and ask what they were doing for dinner. And I forgot to dial seven before 911. And I go through to the, you know, what's your emergency? And I, I'm going, oh, no, no, I didn't really mean to call 911. It's okay. I'm fine. Don't worry about it. And, and they sent a policeman anyway. And I called down to the girls in room 911 uh, to say what had happened. And they nicely came up to my room with their cameras for when the policeman arrived so they could take photographs. And I'm sure, I, 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 no, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm fine. Yeah. So that was the story. <laughs> Very embarrassing. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. What's your most embarrassing moment on stage with your chorus? You know, I thought, because I got these questions ahead of time, I thought long and hard, I was never embarrassed on this stage with my <laughs> chorus. It was... Uh, there, that's another little angel on the shoulder bit of magic that, that we've always been able, even if when we were little and just starting, there was never anything horrible or embarrassing or anything like that. It, we, we just all got out there and sang because we love to. Excellent. Did you have a vision for where you wanted your chorus to go and what you wanted your chorus to be, and how did you inspire them to follow you? Um, <clears throat> early on, uh, we came up with a, a mission statement, uh, and it was a, it was it was true to what I wanted it to be. But it, it, we all agreed that it, and I can't remember the exact wording, but it was something about uh, to provide top quality, um, eclectic a cappella entertainment. That was our mission statement. And at the top quality, the values that went with that were the top quality was we wanted to continue educating ourselves to become better singers and better, you know, performers, better everything. The entertainment was about performance. We valued performing and we wanted to make sure that we did that on a very regular basis. And the eclectic a cappella was that we didn't want to tie ourselves just into a really tight box of barbershop. We wanted to be able to play with it a little bit and try different things. Um, and we did that a lot during the, the first few years. We got a little tied into the barbershop box when we started getting uh, good results at contest. <laughs> uh, but no, and, and how, how I got, and we just, the, the people who, who started Rhythm with me, we all felt the same about it. And so it wasn't like I had to inspire people to be to 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 join me and follow my vision. We all had the same vision. Mm -hmm. We all wanted to do the same thing. That's a great place to be, I would say. Yeah. So now that you've tired retired from directing, you probably have or had plans until COVID. <laughs> Um, what do you hope for your retirement, Mary? Um, well, yeah, we the plan was uh, travel, travel, and travel, um, and now we're going to have to sort of bring it back to a, a tr maybe like we we had a, a planned tr uh, tr to drive down the Oregon, Oregon coast. I cannot speak right now. Excuse me, um, and. We can't do that this summer, and we had uh, had booked a, a river cruise in Europe for the fall, and we won't be doing that as either. Um, so we're just going to right now. 
<laughs> we are in our house. Uh, we've, we've spent a lot of time, we've gotten reconnected with gardening. Uh, I think we're gonna get ourselves a greenhouse because trying to grow stuff in my front window is just not cutting it. <laughs> Um, so we're going to get more fully into that. My husband is, he's got projects for his projects. And so he's, he's busy with that. I'm, um, not, I, I keep telling him I'm retired. I should not have to get up at seven o'clock every morning. So we're, we're having that kind of discussion. Um, uh, but I'm, I'm keeping myself busy and, you know, uh, I've got my projects as well, but uh, when when this is opens up a little bit more, we, we'll probably do traveling in Canada because we really haven't explored Canada yet anyway. And uh, as things open up, we're going to spread ourselves out that way, I think. Um, I have also got some thoughts about some future teaching I might do, but it's still, I'm not sure how I'm going to make it come come to be so I'm not going to lay out plans for you but I teaching has always been a passion for me and uh, I'm going to have trouble leaving it behind entirely so yeah I, I can relate because I'm a teacher too absolutely yes. yeah yeah so Mary your plans aren't the only ones that have been wrecked by COVID um, the region also had big plans for contest and when I think back on your sweet Adeline career, I can't help but think of achievement, contribution, and excellence. Those are the attributes of, you'll probably remember the ACE award that was first given to Karina Garrick back in mm -hmm. 20. It hasn't been presented since, but your regional management team is gonna surprise you right now. And we wanna present you with the 2020 ACE Award from Region 26. Congratulations. <laughs> well, thank, thank you. And go, go get your door. Go get your <laughs> Somebody from the region is delivering something for you. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. And we'll talk to you later, I guess. Or do okay. I come back? We're going to continue. Okay. Yeah. We'll wait for you. Okay. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Hi, Region 26. Hi, Mary. <laughs> okay, I was going to say, what's going on? Hey, I'm coming. Are you coming? Will you let me in? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I get to come in. Oh, my goodness. There we go. Come on over here. Oh. And I'll pull in another chair. I think we can. Yeah, I think we can do it. So, am I supposed to open my present? Yes, let's see your award. We want to see it. Wow, this, this is an amazing surprise. Wow. Oh, look at that. Oh, on behalf of Region 26. Wow. We want you to have something to remember. Well, I will definitely, it's not like I would not remember Region 26, <laughs> but this is beautiful. And it'll fit up on the shelf here behind me somewhere I know. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. My, my whole body temperature changed when you said that. <laughs> I've got to turn my thing on. Okay. Okay. So we're going to carry on here because um, this whole award is kind of something that we have to involve some mentors and some of your past colleagues in. So, Mary, as a recipient of this award, you've maintained membership in Region 26 for at least 20 years. And I think it's been closer to 35. Oh, it's been 35. Yeah. Just, yeah. You've made significant contributions at the chapter, regional, and inter international levels. And you've consistently demonstrated a heart for service beyond your personal achievements with your, within the organization. So I want to welcome one of your sweet Adeline colleagues that you mentioned, actually, when you were talking today, Cheryl Brooke, director of Hearts of Harmony Chorus, who's going to give a tribute to your early years in sweet Adeline. Oh. Cheryl?
He's muted. Unmute. Yeah. All right. Am I on? Yes, you are. Hi, Mary. Hi. <laughs> and congratulations. Thank you. I am honored to have been asked to help present this ACE award to such a talented lady whose path and drive have been an inspiration to me and to many others. I am one of the lucky ones to have known Mary Hager all 35 years of her full barbershop career to date. I first met Mary when I was part of the music team at Gateway when she joined as a rookie, but not just any rookie. She always stood out from the crowd. And from the very first, it was obvious that Mary was the kind of new member you wish you could just simply clone. She channeled her extensive energy and talent into everything she did, whether it was learning all the songs in tenor as rapidly as possible, or volunteering for any of the many jobs that needed participants, and quickly became one of those members that you immediately thought of when something needed be to be done. Mary spent two years on the chorus board, was the chorus performance coordinator, a show producer, made 100 dresses at one point on the costume committee and headed the choreo committee for many years. And Mary, already a very skilled musician, was quick to appreciate this complicated art form of barbershop and was fascinated by its intricacies and harmonies from the very beginning. Mary and I were both very fortunate to have Marlene Eppie as our director at that time. And Marlene, because Marlene really looked at people and saw what they might be good at and gently but insistently pushed them in that direction. And in Mary, she saw a true blue sweet Adeline with many talents and made sure that the opportunities to develop them were presented to her. One of the things Marlene always drilled into her protégés was humility. We had succeeded because the, of the team that supported us, not just on our own merits. And Mary herself has always taught and coached and led with this excellent lesson in mind. I have always appreciated Mary's great laugh. She has a lively sense of humor and finds the world in general rather funny. So rehearsing and working with Mary, you have the great healthy joy of laughing often. In fact, in large crowds, when I want to find her, I simply listen for that joyful, playful laugh. She has the gift of being easily able to laugh at herself as well, which is a marvelous talent for any human to develop. I had to leave Gateway when Mary was really just getting started stretching her wings. So I missed a lot of her um, escapades there. But over the years, we have continued to work together on the regional music staff where she was an integral member of the teaching team for many years. And she has coached most of the choruses I've directed. Her advice has always been insightful and creative. And being coached by a friend has the special element of knowing each other's foibles well enough to, well, let's say I don't get away with much when Mary is coaching me in my chorus. And I've had the privilege of coaching her choruses a couple of times, a privilege and a joy because it was easy to see why her choruses did so well under her leading. At her rehearsals, there was discipline and laughter in equal measure, and every member was made to feel their importance, their personal importance to the barbershop product. She understands what it means to lead a team and worked hard to ensure that as she grew in knowledge, everyone else did too. No lesson was wasted on Mary, and she was constantly adding tools to her teaching toolbox, her ready wit, quick intelligence and ability to delegate, her extensive knowledge of barbershop in all of its aspects, her diplomacy and relative patience, and her inborn <laughs> desire to know as much about her topic as humanly possible and then teach it to others, make her an excellent example for any leader to follow. And now I'd like to turn this over to the leader that will be following Mary, Joanne Killips. Thank you, Cheryl. And yes, they are some pretty big shoes to fill. <laughs> I wish I could tell you that once Mary started directing, she quit doing everything else. That would probably have made my job a little bit easier now. However, as you've probably gleaned from Cheryl's description, that is not Mary's style. Mary's family came to Calgary in the early 90s and having been bit by the barbershop bug 
in Gateway, she immediately joined Chinookwin's show chorus. She quickly took on the jobs of choreographer, assistant director, and she continued working on costuming as well. She also sang with a number of quartets during her time with Chinookwin's show chorus. I had the pleasure of joining Mary on the choreo team and in a quartet or two, making us fast friends. Her final years with Chinookwin's show chorus were spent as frontline director. As you've heard already, Mary had a deep desire to learn and share all she could about the art form. I remember our first IES. I was unable to keep my eyes open after 11 p.m., which is quite odd for me as I'm a night owl, but Mary couldn't stop talking about all the things she had learned each day in the sessions. I'm sorry to say that a number of times she was talking to a sleeping body. She was passionate about sharing her knowledge with others. As a member of the REF, she coached choruses, quartets, led PVIs, and gave private voice lessons. Mary also guided those who wished to get their director's certification while she held the position of DCP coordinator. She was the first to encourage me to get my DCP. And I thank you for that, Mary. Arranging music in the barbershop style was another of Mary's interests. And as part of the arrange, arrangers program, she learned and grew, which came in handy during the early years of Rhythm of the Rockies. This creative aspect was also exhibited in scripting. What fun we had performing her scripts. In October of 2013, Rhythm of the Rockies competed in Hawaii in Harmony Classic AA Division and won the gold medal. What a surprise that was. This accomplishment was due to her leadership. Mary was the only frontline director that Rhythm of the Rockies had known from the time we were prospective up until her resignation in December of 2019. She instilled a strong work ethic in the chorus, encouraging and exciting members to learn more about barbershop. Under her direction, Rhythm of the Rockies flourished and grew, and Mary eventually became a Master 600 director. I use the word eventually because it was a climb of two points per contest for many years. I remember Mary saying to me a number of times, will this ever happen before I retire? And it did. <laughs> Her strength as a leader, uh, her strength as a leader was exhibited by her commitment to develop strong teams within the chorus. You might think that with all of these accomplishments, she set herself apart from the general membership, but oh no, that was not Mary's personality. She loved spending social time with all of her friends. She was at the pub every Tuesday after rehearsal with a number of us drinking her red wine and on occasion, sharing a basket of wings. I feel so privileged to have known and worked with this incredibly talented and caring woman. It is an honor to call her my friend and to be able to join Cheryl in presenting Mary with this well-deserved award. Please join us in acknowledging Mary Hager, recipient of the ACE Award. <laughs> Thank you very much, both Cheryl and Joanne. And congratulations, Mary, again, from everybody in Region 26. And thanks to all the Region 26 people who have chimed in with us here and witnessed this surprise event for Mary. We're gonna end with a video of Mary directing Rhythm of the Rockies Chorus in Honolulu in 2013, when they were Harmony Classic Champions. Enjoy everybody. And thanks very much for being here. This song that we've chosen is Sing Sing by Rhythm of the Rockies Chorus, directed by Mary Hager. And it's arranged by our very own Joey Mitchell. Enjoy, everybody. Thanks for being here. It's when I sing today. Oh. Well, it's easy.
I just feel like I feel like 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 I just 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 feel like I